Hello friends, this is Yusuf here. Uh, welcome to a new video in which we are going to talk about uh, JavaScript array methods. Okay, So, uh, map, filter and reduce are the common array methods which will be used in many uh, situations where we need to solve something. Okay, But uh, many people have some understanding gap on how that thing works. So, we are going to take that thing um, in this video and then go deep into that and then let us understand that. Okay, So, let us get started. So first, uh, let me have a array. Okay, have some one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then uh, the map. Let's go one by one. Okay. So if you want to apply the map method for the array, it will be like uh, array dot map. Then it takes a function as an argument. Okay, and then each element will be given to the function as a parameter. Okay, and then whatever you want to do here, you can do with the um, parameter and we need to return something okay so the map method will expect a return value from the function okay and then that return value will be used in the output array so say for example now I am just saying return the same value okay just to understand how this thing works so it is going to give a response in a new array so let me get that in a variable and then print it So, as you can see, if you run this code, right, we get the same 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because every time we are returning for each iteration, we are returning this the same number, okay. So, if at all I am saying n plus 1, okay, so see what happens. So, we get the result 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because when the number 1 is passed, then we are returning 2, 3 is 2 is passed, then we are returning 3, okay. So, what you have to understand, right, the map method will give an output with the same, I mean not same, the length of the output array will be the same as the input array. Okay? If I have 5 elements, you will get a array of result with 5 elements. If I have 6, you will get 6. Okay? But the each value of that output element is determined by the return statement for each iteration. So just for a uh, fun, if I give return 100 as a static value, so you think what is going to happen? Every time it, the function will execute, it will get 100 as a return value. With that value, the output array will be formed. So, if you run this, you will get basically 100 5 times. So, here what you understand is the map method expect the return value for each iteration and then that return value will be used as the output array. Okay, That is very important. Okay, In general, um, so map method probably use something like this. Okay, So, I have an array. So, then I want an output array that is maybe the square of uh, all the things. So, we can do like this. Okay, n into n. Okay, Then if you get now you understand the code right so we get basically square of each element as a output array okay this is how the map method works so again it will expect whatever the return value for each iteration that return value will be used as a output array regardless whether you use that uh, parameter or not that doesn't matter okay the return value is important okay now let's go to the next one that is the filter okay okay so ar dot filter it also takes you know one function it takes one uh, uh, takes argument okay so the definition of filter method is it will expect for each iteration yet it will expect each iteration either true or false value okay if it is true then that particular element will be used in the output array okay um, so let's see this in action okay so what i'm going to do i'm just basically say return true okay so I am applying the filter method for this array and uh, in the callback function for all the elements I am saying return true. So if I get this result okay, and then if you print this one see what happens. Since we are returning true we get all the values. So if return false as you guessed we might get we will, we will get nothing okay, because all the elements is false so we get the empty array but where we can use this exactly okay so conditionally if i want to select some elements okay i want to select only 1 3 and 5 say for example then this one all the 1 2 3 4 5 will be available in the n variable each time so here i can say if the n divisible by 2 is equals to equals to 1 i am checking if it is odd number okay then return true okay so what will happen only for 1 3 and 5 the true will execute for the others false will be returning okay so if you run this then you will get 135 alone okay 
so again what I am trying to say is for each iteration it will expect a true or false value ok and then based on the true or false value the output array will be formed. So here the output array can be have the length of the same input array or it can be lesser than the length of the input array also right because we are filtering basically. So the filter may satisfy the condition or may not satisfy the condition but the values will not change. So say for example I am saying uh, for the same code I am returning 100 it means it does not gonna store this 100 in the output array ok. So if you run this we still get 135 because 100 is not, not a false value ok. So the filter will expect either truthy value or false value if it is a truthy value that value will be used I mean the actual parameter number whatever the element right that will be used in the output array. So that is the thing. So now so let us say for example um, I want to get uh, output array from this one but I want to only keep the index um, or uh, even index ok when I say even index so it starts from 0 1 2 3 4 right um, so it can take another additional parameter ok so let me keep i ok so if you put here console dot log uh, basically n comma i ok just to check ok so as you can see the first variable n is nothing but your values 1 2 3 4 5 the second uh, parameter i is actually the index from 0 to 4 ok. So just for fun ok I mean to understand the concept I am telling that uh, if the i is equal to equal to 4 I mean if it if I am in the last index ok then I say return true. So what do you think it is going to happen only for the last element it will return true the others will become false. So if you run it I will get only the last element ok. So that is the understanding of the filter. So the filter is going to pass each element to the function but it will expect a true or false value based on that the output will be constructed ok. I hope you understand. Now let us go to the reduce ok. So reduce is one of the I would I would not say complex but mostly misunderstood function ok. So let us try to simplify it. So what I am going to do let me tell you the definition first. So the reduce is going to reduce the given array to a single value ok it is not going to reduce into like uh, one array of single value no it is just going to reduce into one single value ok. So a common example is ok I have an array of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I want to get a sum of all the array ok. Let us see how that is going to happen. So const total is equals to array dot reduce it also takes a function but this time it takes two argument ok. Let us keep i comma j and then let us we are going to do something. First let us understand what is i and j ok. So console dot log i comma j ok i comma j and then for each iteration we need to return some value ok. As of now I am say return 10 ok. So let us see what is going to happen if I run it. So what we get is first of all the i and j value first time when it is printing 1 and 2 ok this is nothing but when the reduce method is called the first two element will be assigned to the first two arguments i and j ok. And then whatever we are returning from that first iteration that will be used as a next i value ok. And then the next j value will be the next element of the array. So here as you can see for the first iteration here i and j become 1 and 2 because 1 and 2 and then 1 uh, we are returning 10 so 10 will, will become i so j will become 3 and then j will become 4 and j will become 5 and then it will end the loop ok as you can see j will become 5 it will end the loop. And the output so what will be the total so the total is nothing but when the last iteration is executing and whatever you are returning from that that will be the total value. Now let us make into a real example and understand ok so I want to add everything so what I can do here instead of doing uh, 10 I can say i plus j ok. So just uh, here I am let me put here i plus j for understanding ok. Now if you run it so for the first iteration the i and j is 2 ok we are returning 3. So this 3 will become the i value and then j will become the next value ok which is nothing but this 3 and then 3 plus 3 becomes 6. 6 becomes the i value for the next iteration and then j gets gets the next value 4 and then we are adding 6 plus 4 becomes 10, 10 
10 becomes the i value for the fifth iteration sorry fourth iteration and then j gets the final value and then we are adding and returning the 15 from the last iteration. So, the a, whatever the value that is being returned in the last iteration will be the value stored in the final variable. Okay. Now, again to, uh, under, to understand this particular thing okay, clearly as I said even though I do return i plus j everything here I want to check if it is a last condition. So, say for if um, j is equals to equals to 5 because for this example I know only the last value of j will be 5 okay then I say return 100 okay. So, if our assumption is correct even though we do all this i plus j calculation the final iteration return is 100 right. So, if you run we need to console log and see the total okay run. So, we get 100 as a result why we get 100 because 100 is the return value for the last iteration okay. So, I hope you understand things. Now, uh, I want to cover one more thing um, that is called the uh, initial value. Okay. So, as I said if your array have 5 elements this reduce is executing the function only for 4 times okay. because for the first time we get the value 1 and 2 and then next we, the value will be 3, 4 and 5 then finish. But if I want to do something like this okay, I have an initial value of maybe 10. Okay. With that I want to add everything. Okay. If this, this is my requirement then what we can do. So, here is the reduce, reduce uh, method takes in a function argument as a first argument it can take the next optional argument which is the initial value. Okay. So, now let us remove this and see what is going to happen now. Okay. If you run it okay. first what we are seeing the i and j it gets 10 and j becomes 1. So, since we gave the initial value here that becomes the first i value and then j is starting from the 0th index. Okay. So, j gets the value from 1 to 5. So, in this way uh, we are getting all the j value and also the i value we can giving a as a initial value. So, if I make it 0 okay. So, that is not going to do anything uh, but still if you see we get the same 15 as a result because if you add 0 as initial value with all the elements we will get 15. But the point here is the i value starting from the 0 what we are specifying as a third argument. Okay, So, that is the point. So, now again you kind of understanding things right. If you do a reduce method for an array it takes the i and j value Okay, you can specify the initial value for i if you want if you do not give it takes the first two elements Okay, and then it will expect a return value from that iteration that will be used as a in i value for the next time. Okay, And regardless of whatever we do the final iterations return value will be the output Okay, that is what we need to understand. Now um, okay, one common use case Okay, if you if you optimize this code actually so how we can write something like this ok arr dot reduce Okay, it takes a function right. So, if I write arr function so i comma j is my parameter and for each iteration I am giving i plus j ok. This is the same code what we have here ok. Um, yes. So, this also if you do console log should print 15 ok. Ok, 15. Okay, so that is it I want to cover in this video. So, one um, again one small hint I can say not hint uh, uh, one good practice. Normally, this variable is called accumulator and this is called current value. Okay. Now, you can try to understand. Okay. So, the accumulator value we are passing as 0 the initial value and then the current value will becomes the first value. If I do not give this 0 then there is no initial value for the accumulator then what the reduce function will do it will keep the first value as accumulator and the current value become the second value and then it will produce. Okay. So, in most of the examples you might see the variable names like accumulator and current value that is why I want to and optionally we can also have the last uh, uh, third parameter called index it will give you the current index and uh, if at all you want to do any logic with the index you can do that. Okay. So, that is my explanation of uh, map filter and reduce. So, I would recommend or advise you to try all these things by yourself. So, that will give you more uh, comfortable understanding and then you can use this wherever you want. Okay. So, I hope this was useful for you guys and then yeah I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.